Well, uh, hello everybody. This is Edward from Australia. Um, today we are here for a celebration live stream, let's say. Um, so uh, we just released the collection 10 and uh, you know, it's the 10th edition. So it means a lot to us. Uh, so, I mean, I'm really happy to uh, be here with you just before Christmas. Uh, it's really the end of a big sprint for us. Uh, we've been working so hard well to come up with new pro pro products uh, to improve the existing uh, assets we had. We really put a lot of work. Uh, this is really a huge milestone for us. Uh, each time we release a new V collection. And uh, yeah, kind of exhausted by uh, all this work, but really happy to, you know, see uh, the reaction of musicians and you know to maybe inspire you to make uh, great music so uh, yeah like i said it's really a lot of work for us um, working on the collection it's really something historical for us this is where everything started uh, with uh, the moog modular the mini moog back in the days uh, back to like 2005 or something well there are some older stuff of course you know, like Storm and so on. But the collection comes back to uh, really the, the root of everything we've been doing. And uh, afterwards, we've started, it, actually, the collection allowed us to get started on new, uh, on new projects such as Mini Brut and started, and even before, like Origin. And this is really what allowed us to grow and to, uh, you know, to have the, the shoulders to uh, sustain uh, new projects and so on. So yeah, um, so V Collection 10, really uh, a lot of new stuff here. Um, some people are, have been surprised a little bit by uh, how balanced the, the new uh, V Collection is. Uh, of course, some uh, uh, heavy synth defenders like Passionate expect more synths. Uh, I've been reading forums and so on. And uh, but the thing is, uh, we are trying to bring a little bit more diversity in the in the collection because, you know, we understand that of course the collection is basically since above all, but uh, at some point uh, we also want the users to be able to produce music without really using something else, and uh, of course it's always so good to get new synths and. Me first, I really love uh, synthesizers, and uh, of course, I prefer to work on a 303 than uh, than doing uh, other type of projects. Uh, but you know, uh, I think it's great that we can bring a little bit more diversity uh, in the collection, and uh, you know, maybe a bit more acoustic sounds. And I think the way we approached it is not really uh, plain samples or or acoustic instruments. Uh, we've been introducing augmented uh, collection and uh, basically a series, not really a collection, uh, mixing synthesis and multi-sample. And um, like uh, it was kind of new for us in the beginning, uh, some new competencies to build up and so on. And uh, like f for the last releases, I'm really happy uh, about the work we've been doing basically. Um, there is like, uh, I think, a lot of experience that we've built up internally. Uh, Especially like since Grand Piano, uh, I think Grand Piano is really amazing. Uh, Brass is also really cool. And the last uh, freshly released Woodwinds is really, really nice, uh, actually. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a different positioning, but uh, I feel like myself uh, for ambient and so on, uh, mixing acoustic stuff, but not really having to, uh, you know, use a lot of processing, but being able to do everything in the box is kind of comfortable and I really like how it kind of you know juggles between uh, synthesis and uh, acoustic sounds and I mean everybody's not doing ambient or cinematic sounds but uh, I guess you could use it for a lot of other usage uh, but yeah um, we'll play a few sounds uh, later on and we'll be able to to figure what, what's new uh, so of course I'm not going to cover like uh, all instruments and every feature in details I think here it's also uh, an opportunity to talk with you guys, and um, and uh, well, we'll cover a few new stuff. And to be honest, I'm 
kind of excited to dive a little bit in the Mini V4 because I think this is one of the milestones uh, for us right now. So, uh, but I will talk about it a bit later. Um, first of all, maybe I can cover uh, a few changes that have been occurring on, let's say, the browser and everything that is, is common to all the instruments. Uh, and then maybe we can just review a little bit the new instruments. Uh, I don't think I will review what's already out there. I've, I've done live streams on ACID-V and we've been doing live streams on the other instruments that were released before. So yeah, mm, we'll dive into the new instrument briefly, uh, maybe try a few presets of some of them, uh, spend a little bit of time on Mini V4, that would be nice because uh, I really want to just show you how the engine is sounding and how different it sounds. Well, I'm not going to compare with the previous one, but you know, just turn everything up, uh, drive and so on, just listen to how it reacts because I'm, you know, one of the units we've modeled is just here and I think it's not as good as the original. Uh, so even more because you can actually drive a little bit more. So, but we'll dive into this. So uh, just for the common changes, uh, I, I don't know if everybody knows this yet, but I will open Mini V, uh, Acid V, sorry. And uh, we'll just dive into uh, a few common features uh, before going into playing sounds and so on. So here we have Acid V, uh, you probably know it already. And um, so one of the things we've been working on is, you know, uh, I think, I, I know it's dividing a lot of people, but uh, some people prefer black themes, the others prefer light, th light themes, it's the same in the OS. So we've been introducing a light theme for people who like, uh, let's say, uh, brightness. Uh, so it affects all the common parts of the instrument. Uh, so the bottom toolbar, the top toolbar, the side menus, um, and also the browser. So uh, uh, as you probably notice at the same time, uh, there is quite a lot of changes here. So not only the, the wide view, but uh, we reskinned pretty much all the graphical components of our instruments. And so, oh, <laughs> almost spilled tea on the keyboard. What the f <laughs> um, And uh, so basically like an OS upgrade, we've been like refining the style of pretty much all the sections. We worked the hierarchy of the menus um, and just, you know, a little bit of polish everywhere. So it might be not obvious, but it's actually, it feels brand new and I really like, you know, when I update my OS that everything feels a little bit more polished or a little bit different. It feels like, you know, uh, things evolve and I really like um, that the style is evolving with us every year. Uh, so the chat is really, really is on my phone, so I have hard times reading. Yeah, hello everybody. It's good to have you. Yep, just taking if there were initial questions. Uh, but myself, I really prefer dark uh, themes in general. So I will switch back to the dark theme, you know. So this is how it looks in dark. And, um, you know, we've been also adding some, some kind of uh, background pictures on the right. I really like how, how it looks, you know. So depending on the type of presets, you have different uh, pictures. So this is what we brought with Analog Lab Play. And I really like it. Uh, so yeah, basically this is the new browser. Um, I can show you also the side panel has been reskinned a little bit. Looks much better. Looks more modern. We still have the tutorials. Uh, uh, and by the way, if you never, if you have never seen that, on the side panel we have tutorials that are built in the instruments. I don't think there are a lot of people who are doing this, but I know a lot of people miss that. And if you don't know how to program the, uh, this, uh, the instrument sometimes, you could just spend a little bit of time learning. Um, we've been putting a lot of efforts on this and I really hope it helps some people around here. Uh, yeah, I, I already see some uh, upgrade price uh, complaints. Uh, I mean, I won't spend really a lot of time talking about it, uh, but you know, we didn't really, we didn't change anything. Uh, of course, uh, what, what I can say is, yeah, I know it, it's, it's always too expensive to buy software. Uh, 
But you know, for us, it's really important. It, it's a lot of efforts, and it, this is also what sustains the company. Like without V Collection, we wouldn't be able to uh, continue uh, doing hardware or just having like uh, more than uh, 170 people working in the company. And uh, pretty much everybody knows that later in the year, it will, the price goes down. Uh, so, of course, some people uh, buy now and it's fine. You spend more time using the instruments and so on. But for some who can't afford, I, I understand it's frustrating, but you can benefit from a better price later on. But overall, we have an FAQ article on the website. And, uh, and you know, the, we try to, to keep a price scheme that is fair. And, you know, we subtract uh, the price of the products you purchased before the release of the collection. No, not all competitors are doing this. So if you buy instruments early, well, you, you will pay the same price at the end. And, uh, and I understand that some of you may be frustrated, but uh, I'm pretty happy that it pays my salary, actually. So, you know. Anyway, uh, what else can we say about the new improvements? Um, oh, yeah, there is one thing. So if some of you are doing sound design, and uh, especially sound banks, uh, so we added something. So when you create user banks, so it doesn't work on the factory banks, right? All the banks that you are buying uh, at Arturia. Um, but if you right click here, you see that there is a new function called import picture. And uh, for example, here I have a picture of my cat. And, uh, and here you see, I can customize the pictures uh, of my sound banks. So if you plan to do presets, uh, maybe preset banks and sell them or share them on, on the social or on forums or whatever, Discord, whatever, you can now customize uh, your own sound banks. And uh, yeah, so basically you can use a picture of your cat or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I think it, it's been asked by many, many uh, users. So I hope people who want to uh, make sound banks will be happy with this. And yeah, uh, so I won't spend too much time on the generic stuff. Uh, maybe we can just dive into the first instrument. Uh, it's probably not the instrument I'm the most comfortable with because I'm not a keyboardist. So please uh, be tolerant with my uh, skills of keyboard playing. Uh, so the first one is a uh, CP Semery, and uh, and basically CP Semery is kind of a complement to the um, Wurlitzer and the uh, Stage 73, the roads that we have in the V collection. We already had like two electric pianos, and this one is a bit of uh, both. It's uh, half an electric piano and half a classic piano. So we have Piano V, which uh, regroups several models of acoustic pianos. And uh, we have basically the Verli and the Stage 73 uh, talking about like the electric pianos. And this one is a bit in between. It's not as uh, known as the, the roads and so on. It has its own character. I mean, some people might not like it. Uh, myself, I, I kind of like it, actually. But I prefer when it's played smooth, like uh, the Violizer is kind of the same for me. I, I'm really a big fan of the roads in general, but the Violi is a bit aggressive. So I really like, you know, to play smooth on it. And with this one, uh, I th I'm kind of, I share the same opinion, but it's really my, perf uh, my personal preference. And uh, so this is really a classic song. And you know, so if you play slowly, like uh, like soft, it's really smooth. I really like it like this. When it's when it's harder, you get more character, right? Sounds very like um, very Yamaha, actually. So yeah, and uh, this one, uh, on this instrument, we modeled all the electronics. 
like uh, classic Arturia. We've been, you know, looking everywhere, modeling every components and so on. Uh, but on the other hand, this one is sampled. So uh, we didn't really sample before. We were only doing like uh, physical modeling. And uh, on this one, we believed it was not really convincing. So we preferred uh, mixing like modeling and sampling. And uh, so some people might say, oh, it will be limited and so on. Uh, but there are actually quite a great variety of presets inside. Uh, I can maybe show you a few a few songs. So uh, you might be wondering, like this doesn't sound like a piano at all. And I think like these creative presets. I really like them, actually. And uh, I'm showing you uh, um, a few other creative sounds. Oh, sorry. It's not, it's not just a sample library, right? We have quite some diversity here. I think this one is pretty good, uh, quite lo-fi. So, um. If you're into like lo-fi hip hop and so on, I, I think this one is really, really amazing. A lot of background noise from the preamp, some noises of the mechanics. So of course you have control over, over these kind of parameters. Uh, so just have to readjust the size. And basically you might have been wondering like how did these like kind of pads I played before are made? Uh, and you actually have quite a lot of controls. So basically, one of the consoles I really like is uh, the response curve, as I mostly prefer the soft sounds from this instrument. And here you can just remap the reaction of the instrument. Yeah, and so as I'm often like using the soft, like the soft velocities, so sometimes I just use a compressor uh, uh, in the effect section, and it really helps uh, getting more, more consistent volume. And you have uh, plenty of other parameters. So the envelope here is what has been used in the previous batches to make pads. You know, so if I raise this up to the top. And it's, it works really well. I really like it. So you can just go from a piano to a pretty cool pad machine. And we have also the controls on like uh, the noises, the mechanics, uh, the preamps, and so on. So yeah, let's check a few other presets, and then we'll switch to another instrument. So this is the first one I've played. What about this one? This one is pretty good as well. I really like it. So we have a proper lo-fi piano. Let's try it out. Amazing. 
amazing. I love it. It's really chill. It's really soft. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, and once again, I'm not a keyboardist, so <laughs> pardon my play. So we are uh, our last one. <laughs> so sorry if I didn't play really a lot of classic sounds, but myself, I really like creative stuff, and uh, I'm not really a keyboardist, so you know, I'm just taking what I would use actually. Uh, so <laughs> let me just check the chat. Okay, thank you for understanding, guys. Adding some ballsy vowel filter as an insert effect for synths. Well, actually, uh, David, we had a uh, vocal filter back in the days in the old Minimoog. Uh, but we removed it, actually. It was part of really old assets. And... Uh, we still have a vocal filter in pigments, actually, uh, but we didn't. We don't really use it uh, elsewhere. But that's a good suggestion, actually. Yeah, sorry, Christophe, it's not in French, uh, but you know, a lot of people are speaking English, and just a few people are speaking French. I know we are French, but you know. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to continue. Uh, feel free to send me your questions if you want me to reply. So I will just play a little bit uh, Augmented Woodwinds first. Um, once again, I'm really not going in depth here. Uh, especially I didn't work on these instruments. So the previous instrument, uh, one of my colleagues, Cedric, worked on it, the CP70. And Augmented is, uh, is uh, handled by Calum, uh, but he's in UK and he couldn't uh, join the live stream. So I'm just going to uh, play a few sounds uh, instead of him. And uh, I will go more in depth on the Minimoog and on the, um, the Mini Freak. And uh, yeah. So I didn't really know what to play. And uh, I, I will just do the same as I'm used to do. Uh, I'll play sounds that I liked. Uh, I went through a few of them and maybe to hold the notes and tweak a little bit the macros and so on. And uh, myself, I really like when sounds are more like uh, like surprising, let's say. Um, I like acoustic sounds, but I prefer like more eccentric stuff. So I chose a few uh, sounds that are not really uh, woodwinds, you know, but so I'll just play the first one, like the more classic, and then we'll switch to the other ones, you know. Uh, like this. And so I'm, I'm holding the notes. I'll just turn a few knobs. So here, like you probably know, you can morph from one sound to, uh, to another. And usually we try to morph for an, from an acoustic sound to an electronic sound. This one works really well. So, uh, 
to be honest, if you if you're into like some ambient stuff, maybe writing music for films, cinematic stuff, I think it's really something unique. This augmented series, uh, you know, like I think the contact libraries and everything that's been used is really nice, but it's kind of very simple, very like uh, positioned in a classic sound. What I like here is that I feel like I'm hearing new stuff every time I play presets and I don't feel like I need to spend a lot of time processing afterwards. I get instantly like, a, you know, something with character, something original. And I feel like nowadays in movies, you don't really want just violence, you know, you want something a little bit more. Well, it depends what you do, of course, but I, I like this. It's a different touch on, you know, cinematic instruments. So let's go for something very like uh, a bit more original. Uh, don't even remember what it is, but let me read the description. Okay, something dark. I like this. Like uh, I think this kind of sound would work pretty well with a mod wheel, like uh, with a pitch up or something. Yeah, a bit scary, right? Uh, yeah, my, my headphones are like the 700 Pro X. Uh, it's amazing if you didn't try them. Like I was all the way into the the old DT and the new ones are amazing. It's really comfortable, isolates pretty well. Uh, can you show some combinations of augmented series with one of the AFX effects? Uh, I could, but uh, if I have time at the end, we'll try this, okay? All right. And Francis Charlie is asking, are we going to plan an R3 AVC of the Axis virus? Uh, man, I would love to do that so much, so much. Uh, I already asked to uh, uh, Mr. Kemper many times, but you know, maybe one day, maybe one day. We have one back here, actually, Snow Edition. So let's play another song. Uh, The movement is pretty nice here, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Like the motion, like uh, this, this kind of movement, it's pretty nice on this patch. Uh, Thank you for the positive messages, guys. It's really comfort It's really good to hear that, to be honest. You know, sometimes the release time is uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of, of like uh, fatigue. And, you know, people complaining, I completely understand, but it's also good to see people who are happy. Okay, hit and rise. This one must be pretty tough. So this was just one note. That's awesome. Wow. This 
it's pretty impressive. Yeah, so I'm not a augmented series master, so you know I'm not so used to them, and I kind of really like it to be honest. The thing is, you know, I love synths. I've been working on a lot of synths in the V collection, and you know, I love it. I will always love it. But sometimes some fresh sounds is really welcome to be honest. Uh, let's play something something else. I remember this one. Yeah, you know what I like with this kind of, you know, presets, even the ones before, I feel like each preset is a strong idea. You know, it it's really part it can be like almost a theme on its own and no it's it seems stupid but I really like this Hell's Gate oh yeah my selection is maybe not the most cla classical sounds but this is what I like Here we have just one side, and here the other one. Hey, it blends really well, actually. It's pretty, it's pretty gentle for Hell's Gate, right? I would expect something a bit more like a radical. Yeah, me too. Me like yeah. I'm just replaying to Geo. <laughs> We're talking headphones, but uh, me too. I really like the new ones, especially for the like the low end is really deep. All right, uh, uh, let's go for our last one. You know. <laughs> Just checking what's inside. So we have a lot of synths here. No. And what's cool here is, imagine I would like play for a, a cut in a movie or something, just playing the sound and then touching a little bit the macros and you get some evolution that are really convincing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, makes me want to make a little bit of ambience right now. Uh, okay. So I didn't really dive into the advanced menu, but uh, you know this is this will be for another time. Uh, I, I'd rather spend a little bit of time in the mini V right now, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, frankly, um, if you have the hardware, uh, we had a problem on the prices. And uh, the hardware owners didn't have a discount like uh, uh, someone who would have purchased uh, software from the V collection before. So uh, pretty soon, I guess you will receive an email or something, or just check the price regularly, and we'll, we are updating this on the web store, and you will get your discount. I mean, it just makes sense, right? Uh, yeah. Augmented guitars, yeah, that would be awesome, man. Yeah. So I already know what's next, so I can't tell you. But uh, it's not guitars, but it's really nice too. But uh, that's really a good idea. That's one of the things I would like to see uh, as well. So back on the classic stuff, let's say. Look what we have here. So I've, 
I can be maybe talk a little bit uh, for this one. Um, so Mini V, this is really a story for us, like a long story for us. So I have a pretty nice story to tell you. Back in the days, it was around like 2004 or something. Uh, we wanted to model a Minimog, right? But uh, we wanted to come up with a partnership with Moog. Back in the days, Bob Moog was still there. And uh, basically, the CEO of the company knew that Bob Moog uh, was taking a plane. Maybe it was for NAM or something. I don't really remember the details. But he managed to take the same plane. <laughs> and uh, he got in the plane and he checked that Bob Moog was somewhere uh, sitting in the plane. And so he approached him like, OK, uh, it seems weird, but <laughs> Um, I'm the CEO of a company, we are doing software, and we would really want to model a mini MOOC into software. This was quite new back in the days, right? And uh, Bob Moog said, OK, well, that seems pretty exciting. I mean, let's go. And you know, analog was kind of down uh, back at this area, but a lot of people were you know, craving for analog gear. So. The uh, Bob Moog said, OK, well, let's make it. And that's why back in the days when we released the Mini Moog V original, which was actually free in the beginning, well, we had the uh, trademarks and so on because Bob Moog was uh, all the way with us partnering uh, to make this instrument. So that's why the Mini, the mini, Moog kind, the, the mini V kind of aged, uh, because until then, we've been updating it a little bit. but a big part of the engine was still the same. And uh, so we don't have the name anymore and trademarks and so on. But so we really wanted to make to make a new Minimook because, you know, it's kind of a benchmark on the market. And we've been making so much progress on modeling since like, I mean, back in the days, there were the old generations, let's say. And nowadays, like we have many more people in the company we just build up a lot of knowledge and competencies. And uh, the, mini, the mini V we had did not reflect w what we are capable of doing, right? So uh, until then, we've been releasing like uh, Jeep 8V, the MS20, you know, the new Prophets, a lot of new instruments that are actually really good. But uh, people were still comparing us to the competition based on the mini V. And we were like, oh my god. We can spend so much energy in trying to make the best instruments uh, we can and still being compared with the old instruments, right? So we, ca we, were, t we were really eager to tackle this. And it, this is it, actually. This is the new mi Mini V. And bro, oh my god. I didn't work on this one. I, I only write, wrote the brief uh, in the beginning. But then uh, Calum uh, followed this instrument, but I just tried the prototype from time to time. And I mean, it sounds as good as the original. I, OK, there is a bias here. I'm working in the company, but you can't deny this. So let's just play a few sounds first. And uh, so this is the basic, actually. OK, no, wrong instrument, sorry. OK, so basic sound. Let's go. And this three oscillator sound, man. I mean, what? Yeah, I could listen to a filter for hours like this. Let's let's go for at least five minutes. Maybe I'll do it with the envelope. It will be more smooth. Let's go. You hear this singing? And so basically, we wanted, like back in the days, the um, Mini V we had, we had kind of a habit as we didn't have a lot of instruments to put a lot of features inside. 
and we ended up with you know a mini mook that didn't really have mini mook sound at the end and uh so we wanted to change that and so we came we came up with an idea of going back to the core and add just a little bit more you know just a little bit and so we just focused on really the core of the sound and this is really what i want to hear right now with you and just adding a few tweaks you know and uh, basically you just want it sounds like this and we wanted the death and uh you know what, let's play a few presets and then we'll just start from an init patch and just hear the core of the sound of the mini, okay? So, uh, oh yeah, so, just long story short, we wanted something simple, we wanted just the core, you know, the essence of the, of the mini MOOC, but we still wanted to add a few uh, stuff for you guys, right? So one of the most important things, I think, is the polyphony. So a lot of people have, have been asking for a memory mode, right? Uh, I, I mean, we discussed this, but we feel like, okay, let's just see how it goes with the Mini-V and let's add polyphony and let's see how it goes. And maybe we uh, actually don't need a memory mode. So uh, let's play this sound. So this one is a polyphonic. It's not really a Mini-V sound, but it sounds amazing. And uh, if you see on the bottom right, you have a vintage knob. And w when used in polyphony, you can hear uh, pretty much, like it, it can be subtle, so if you, uh, if you don't have headphones, maybe you won't hear it, but it will introduce like everything you, you would like to have in an analog synth, you know. So let's play a chord. You hear? just feels more alive. Let's play another sound. Sounds like a, ther a theremin. Let's groove bass. Uh, so this is pretty classic, right? Uh, this is what it wanted, like the grease, man. I don't know if you can hear this low end, but bro, it's solid. And one of the big fr frustrations uh, I had with uh, filters in general is, you know, it's, you always want to crank up the resonance, but with so many filters, you're losing everything. You know, you lose all the low end, you lose all the body, and it's so frustrating, right? And with Moog in particular, like, th their filters are so good, but I end up, like, never having the the resonance up because it just kills everything and if you look at here we have a little button called bass compensation and what it does is it kills this problem so if i i, I will just turn it off here we have a lot of low end right and it disappears as i turn up the resonance but with this We preserve the pleasure, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, and this is not everything like, 
Let me play a few of the presets. Okay, so this is the demonstration of, okay, it can still go way beyond a classic mini move, right? So if, if you like side trends or something, it can be also appropriate. Doesn't look like it, but... Oh, something a little bit trendy as well. So okay, these presets sound a bit ravey because I took them from the hyper rave expansion that you get with the V collection. So it sounds pretty harsh. I really like these legato presets. Mini can also sound ravey, period. And yeah, like rediscovering the, you know, the pleasure of playing a, a Moog sound uh, polyph uh, with polyphony is really, really nice. I really like it. Taking a few comments. Yeah, <laughs> full Ozora, you're right. And now we have something serious here. You hear the depth? So, let's just talk about the interesting stuff now. So I'm just holding this pad. So here I'm using the resonance compensation. This is without it. Oh, it still sounds pretty fat. And uh, so, additions to the new engine, we have drive and feedback. Originally, feedback means you gotta be cautious because otherwise it will sound like a fart, right? So like this. Create some instabilities. But we have a complementary control now called Drive. And here you get something, right? And what's great is with the Drive control, if you drive a lot, the feedback gets really, really softer. I mean, not softer, but you have more control over it. it it will not like mess everything like it used to do. And trust me, I'm not sure there are a lot of other mini software that sounds like this, man. Even me, I'm really shocked by how good it is like the depth the texture all the non-linearities like distortion in the in the mixer in the vca in the filter everything is here man
one thing we can do as well, like this preset is already pretty amazing, but let's kick the unison on. Wow. Spread, stereo spread. I'm not sure you can fit this on in any mix because <laughs> you need a lot of space, but bro. We're talking about synth, bro. And vintage knob. Even more alive. You hear this like uh, cut off, cycling left, right. Solid. I'm really happy to be honest. Like. what people are saying yeah. yeah 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 no more borders between mono and poly this is amazing uh, so a question from David about how did we approach uh, basically I'm not a GSP engineer so I don't want to say things that I might regret later on. <laughs> but let's say that overall, we got better because we just kept working on this, right? It's been like 20 years. So of course, in the beginning, we had less knowledge. We, uh, we had smaller teams. We had less, uh, like an environment, even out of the GSP engineers that was different. Now we have amazing sound designers, we have product owners, we have product managers, we have QA testers, we have a lot of people who participate in elaborating an amazing product. And this is really a teamwork. So of course, some people are doing the math, right? But some people are here to listen and to refine and to refine and to refine until it sounds like we want to and like the unit we prefer the most. You know, we had several units and we picked the one we prefer the most and we kind of calibrated everything on this unit because this one this was the one we really liked the most and at the end we just adjust a little bit to our own convenience and yeah i mean it's just a matter of experience teamwork and so on and also exigence you know uh, the only problem is the cpu really like uh, you could go even deeper but at some point the cpu cost and uh, let's say the added value you know, won't really match and, you know, at some point you need to stop. But yeah, amazing. So let's do another sweep just because it's fun. And this drive sounds so good, man. Here, no effects, just the engine. Unison again. Oh, la la. So, yeah, I mean. If you didn't buy, just download the demo and try. Uh, I mean, you can't, you can't like, uh, you have to be sensitive to something like this. Um, I swear. Anyway, so time is running fast. Uh, just wanted to show you uh, just a few trick, a uh, little thing on Mini Freak V, because maybe some people missed this. Uh, yeah, Frank. Look forward to LCD VR, work on this one, and it was really amazing. I mean, now I really hate 303 because it was so hard to get everything correctly so and so tough, but actually it's one of the, my favorite instruments I've been working on. 
It sounds really nice, it's simple, it's fast, it's inspiring, and it's fun. Um, oh bro, if you don't have space on your SSD, you should buy a new one, I swear. Uh, yeah, sorry Aaron if the update disappoints you. I hope the next one will be to your taste. All right, let's go for a mini freak V bef before the time runs out. So, uh, so actually, what can I say on mini freak V? I'm really happy that it's part of V collection. Why? Because, like I said in the beginning, you know, V collection has a lot of overlap between different products. Like uh, there are a lot of analog synths. We can deny this, and we love it. So that's good. We have a few digital synths, vintage. We have organs. We have keyboard and so on, okay, more diversity, this is good. We have augmented now, but we still miss something like modern, modern sound design, something that would be suited like for like experimental, forward-thinking music genres, right? Like, I don't know, modern GNB, things that really require maybe more effect processing, more, you know, not just a saw tooth and a square in a filter, right? So, mini V is kind of Providing this in the collection, and I hope we'll introduce a little, a little bit more in the future. And uh, yeah, so let's try a few sounds. I, I didn't choose like uh, classic sounds, just mentioning. So, okay, I just blast my ears. And okay, this is a little bit more modern, right? But actually the mini the mini V could do these kind of sounds, right? Um let's go with the macros. Wait. So I don't have a lot of space on my desk, so I might have to use the, the mouse. Okay, let's go. Okay, this is what I was talking about. We didn't have this in the collection, right? So, okay, these are not sounds for synthwave, but we need diversity, right? And this is like the, the rave of tomorrow. So we have sounds like Closer from Serum, Pigments, and so on. Okay, if you didn't guess before, Yes, I like bass music. Uh, that's why I'm playing these kind of sounds. Let me just sustain a little bit the GUI, like this. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of uh, ravey sounds. I also used some of the sounds in the in the hyper rave bank. And I really like this kind of sound.
And I really like that this instrument can allow for really original stuff. And you know, these kind of sounds like hyper pop sounds was kind of uh, not present in V Collection before. Uh, and actually, I'm not doing a lot of stuff uh, except touching the macros. <laughs> the preset is doing its, its own stuff. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and basically, uh, just before the release of the collection, um, we updated uh, Mini Freak V and Mini Freak, and uh, I just wanted to show you real quick what we put inside. So uh, in Micro Freak, we had a wavetable engine, and as you might have noticed before, we didn't have, have it in Mini Freak V. So the reason is we wanted to come up with a new engine that sounds better. Uh, because, you know, Mini Freak uh, V, the software and, and the hardware have more like processing power, so we could afford it. So this is uh, basically a sine wave. And what I really like to do, uh, especially with wave tables, is uh, doing cross mode, basically. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mute this first oscillator, and I'm going to enable the second one. And uh, I'm going to go for a sine wave. Like this. Uh, actually not, actually I'm, go I'm going to show you right away. I would like to do cross modulation here. Uh, so I'm using a sine wave here. So in general, if you want to do cross mod, it's really much better to use a sine wave. I mean, the aim is to start from very low, um, like a very few harmonics and to expand from it. So if you already have a lot of harmonic content, you're not really, you're kind of messing with what you want to do, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with the sine wave now. And what I want to do now is browse sine waves, uh, uh, browse wavetables and create new timbers on these sine waves on the right. So, so uh, I'm raising the volume to, just to show you the waveform. So we introduced a brand new uh, library. So I will just show you a few. And you know, these kind of harsh sounds to make uh, cross modulation is really good. You know, so I'm just going to unwind that works. So here, this is the raw sound of the wave table, and what I'm going to do here is mute this oscillator, use just the second one, and use the first one to modulate it. And you get instantly a pretty intense... Uh, pretty intense sound. Out of the box. Work through swing mode as well, a bit softer. Phase mode is really uh, intense. And if you feel it's too harsh, you, you can still filter it beforehand, right? And now what I can do is just like try. Uh, actually, wait, I'm going to map this on the mod wheel. This. Okay. This way, I have I free my hands. I can do something else. So my mod wheel is modulating the frequency modulation. Now I can just browse wave tables. And just to a signation and you get some crazy timbers, right? So of course then you have to tame it, you have to use your filter, you have to use effect processing. But I like this kind of sounds, I, I can't lie. And so if you're doing like uh, drum and bass, dubstep, EDM, this kind of stuff, these are pretty interesting territories to explore.
And yeah. This is quite extreme. I like it. It works well. And uh, what's kind of interesting too is to map several parameters on the same on the, right now on the mod wheel, and I can modulate everything at the same time. So let's maybe scan the wave table at the same time, like this. So now I'm moving the frequency modulation and the the wave table at the same time. You see. And um, of course, then you, you have to regulate the harshness using the filter, or you can actually open it at the same time. Uh, for example, like this. And one of the new uh, effects we introduced is the super unison. So. It's pretty much, it's kind of almost the same as in pigments. You have less control, but it's very usable. And uh, paired with this, it works pretty nicely. And now it takes a lot of space. It reduces the drive. And then, well, you know, you know what I'm going to do, a distortion. Oh. And what I can do as well is modulate the amount of distortion using the mod wheel. Uh, like this. And I really like presets where everything is tied to the same parameter. And then you can refilter a little bit. And that's it. Of course, this is just one use case. It's just like, it's pretty common. It's pretty common in uh, modern sound design to use wave tables like this. Serum is basically all about this, right? So yeah, a little bit uh, more di diversity uh, in uh, in the sounds we provide in V-Collection. So let me just check a few comments. Uh, it's been a while I haven't checked. And thank you for the people who are answering uh, for me. That's really helpful. Uh, and can empty your wallet pretty fast. Yeah, well, if that's the case, excuse me if I appreciate it because this is how I get paid. So yeah, uh, so there's a question from David again. Uh, what is the difference between a normal unison and super unison? So if we were talking about synthesizers, like cl classic synthesizers, unison is basically, instead of allocating the voices uh, polyphonically, you allocate all the voices, so I mean all the audio paths, oscillators, filters, amplifiers, everything to the same note. And then what you do is creating a little bit of detune between all the voices, and you get some kind of super wide uh, effect, like I did on the Mini MOOC, uh, on the Mini V. On the Mini V, it was really unison proper. That's why you heard a lot of you know small differences, because we were using dispersion here, uh, the vintage knob is adding dispersion in many parameters, so each voice sounds a little bit different in the stereo space, and it's really nice. But it takes CPU because you're playing several voices in one note, right? Super Unison is kind of mimicking this. It's really a kind of super chorus, uh, but at a low, uh, like a smaller cost than the Unison. And uh, basically, you can also do a lot of stuff before 
and then process uh, the diff like the the voice and splitting it into many uh, different voices. You can choose like the number of voices, the detune, and so on. The effect is quite similar. In a synth, it sounds a little bit different, but like depending on what you, what you want to do, you can just try one or the other. What I like with the Super Unison is that you can like just process maybe above 200 hertz, and you're not messing that much with your face. And with, when you're using Unison, you're just like you're wobbling and everything. So it's kind of different. So yeah, uh, I think I'm pretty much done here. Uh, uh, so I read, I tried to re read the chat during the the live stream, but uh, I might have missed some questions. So let's just spend uh, uh, a small moment on this. Uh, okay, I'll just have to dig for the questions. Just a minute. Yeah, there's the the team there behind who's who sent me the questions. Just need to get them uh, because I, I couldn't read all the time, right? Okay, so first question. I love the new instrument in VCX. Do you guys ever plan to do something like the Roland MKS20? Uh, yeah, some people ask for it. Uh, it's been on the list. Maybe not on the short list uh, though, but uh, you know that's always a good suggestion. Uh, maybe I have other stuff in mind to be honest right now, but uh, you never know. Maybe in the future. Any chance of a Killab MK3 next year, please? Maybe, maybe uh, if you spend a good year, uh, maybe the Santa will be kind with you. I stumbled on a patch for Alex Claire's too close a long time ago. Anyone? Oh, sorry, I don't understand this question. Uh, someone is asking you if a preset, uh, the name of a preset, or a preset he heard in a song that looked like the something I played, I guess. But I'm not sure if the chat helped this person. Could you show us some sound of a CD? Uh, okay, I can show you a few sounds, but real quick. So Acid V, back on it. I already did a live stream, that's why I didn't show it, sorry for this. So Acid V, our interpretation of a modern classic. Uh, so, like this. So let's play a few songs, let's go. So, if you don't know the, this instrument, we have the classic view here with a simplified uh, approach of the sequencer, and here we have the full sequencer, modulators, uh, you know, and effects. And uh, so let's just play a few sounds and then next question. So there are a lot of classic sounds, but also some very like original presets like this. So if you're into uh, club music, it can be really useful. Of my cat, nice. <laughs> uh, what preset can I show you? Yeah, this kind of presets I really like because it sounds very chemical. And that's the power of having uh, modulators in the plugin, right? You can go from very static sounds to very like evolving sounds. Any 
yeah, so basically the, um, the, 3, the 303 is really good at doing baseline, but actually for leads, it's remarkable. Like it's way above my expectations. And I know, I know a lot of people have been using it for, to make leads for a long time. But uh, myself, I didn't. And I really rediscovered the 303 and the leads. Ah, this is a preset we use for the video. <laughs> So yeah, and um, basically if you want to uh, try the demo, I mean, it's free. Just feel free to try the sounds and make up your own opinion. Um, can we switch to the questions? Yeah. All right. So the vowel filter, we already uh, talked about it. Uh, any plans on preset cloud sync? Man, that's a question I've been thinking about for a long time. So if you guys think it's really a good idea, I, I think it is, uh, please send us messages. I mean, send messages to the support because I really, I would love to do that. Of course, it's a lot of work. It's really complex, but uh, I mean, I would love that, you know, you're working on something at home, maybe making new presets, you're getting inspired and you want to make, you want to make music with a friend, you come to his house, you just have to log in the ASC and boom, you have all your sounds. And this, I would love to do it, man. And I mean, one day, I I can guarantee that it's doable uh, with our current plannings and so on. But that's one of the main things I would like to push in the future. Uh, this one, we already talked about it. How about Microfreak V? Well, uh, doing a software of Microfreak, I mean, does it really make sense as we have many freak now? I mean, maybe you would like us to invest energy in doing something else, right? Uh, I mean, that's what I would like to do instead. But pretty much everything you can do with, uh, micro, uh, with Microfreak, you can do it with Minifreak. Okay, the new engines are not there yet, but just a little bit of patience. patience. Uh, someone was wondering if we would release a VST version of the Polybrute, uh, like we did with Minifreak. Uh, we thought about it. Right now we are fine with Polybrute uh, as it is. Uh, but trust me, I think it would be really, really hard to model Polybrute. Really, really hard. Would you ever add drum machines to the collection? Well, I guess we received thousands of requests like this. Uh, we are discussing it. Uh, I can guarantee that we will do it, but there is key interest of the people. You know, one of the questions I'm asking myself is, uh, is it better to do like drum machines or to do like another solution that is maybe more usable to produce music rather than just ja jamming with the drum machines? But, uh, you know, I, I understand the interest. Um, you know, you're not the first one to ask this question and we hear you. Okay, uh, so now this has not been asked before. Uh, will Pigments get an update to the support the new preset browser? Of course, of course, of course. You know, every year we update Pigments and uh, it's pretty soon. So uh, yeah, yeah, it will get the, the whole revamp and a lot of new uh, additions, don't worry. Would a subsequent 37 plugin make sense compared to MiniV? Uh, so, uh, I can tell you right now, I wouldn't do it because Subsequent is still commercialized, I think, or is a pretty recent uh, synthesizer. And, you know, modeling a synth that has like 50 years to me is okay. Uh, like, for example, uh, how, how would I feel if someone models the poly route? Um, I wouldn't be really happy. As soon as it's not commercialized anymore, I think it makes sense. Or if you do a partnership with the brand, this is what we did with uh, Bukla, for example. But right now, no, that's not in the plans. 
What about the Pigment's hardware controller? Oh, uh, that would be a pretty huge controller. Um, I mean, we didn't really design Pigments uh, to support hardware. Uh, there are a lot of things that can move, etc. Like designing a hardware controller would be really, really hard, you know. But, you know, we don't know what the future plans. But right now, no. You utilize or foresee utilization of AI in the future of, uh, of plugins or in the development. Uh, we already use it uh, sometimes. We don't have a solution that is really marketed based on AI. Uh, we already have, okay, it's not really visible, but in uh, Analog Lab, when you're browsing preset, when you click on a preset, select it, you have uh, the right section. And here you have a little hamburger menu. And here you have discover similar presets. And this is actually powered by AI, and it will, recom it will recommend you uh, similar presets to this one. Otherwise, we use it to uh, model stuff, GSP and so on. How about an R3 IMP MIDI controller? Which do you suggest in the meantime? Uh, I'm not really an MP guy, to be honest. Uh, I know that there are just a f only a few MIDI, uh, MP solutions on the market. Uh, for us, maybe one day, actually, that's very interesting. I mean, interaction with instruments is really something that, uh, you know, it drives us a lot. I mean, Polyroot would try to go beyond what we've been doing before, the morph, uh, the ribbon, this, this XY uh, touch sensitive, plus uh, you could press it and so on, which kind of provide a new experience to interacting with the instruments. I can tell you what it is, but we are currently working on new ways to interact with our instruments. It's, you will see it one day. Uh, we are not working on the MP uh, controller though. And, uh, but you know, just understand that uh, interactions and expressivity overall, you know, how can I translate my emotion through movement through an instrument is really something that, um, you know, creates keen interest for us uh, in the company. And we hope we'll be able to achieve milestones uh, in that regard. OK, someone says, uh, can you make, uh, can you pay more attention to the quality of the sounds uh, in your presets? Because this person thinks a lot of them are not usable. So. I understand this. Uh, some of the presets, uh, basically, this person says, I want more 80s uh, basic analog presets. So yeah, uh, all our presets are not made for 80s music. We have a lot of like 80s banks and so on. In the res most recent uh, plugins, like the Mini V, for example, we pay attention to have the classic sounds. And back in the days, it's true that we didn't have enough. But now we try to balance, you know, we try to get the classic sounds and also we try to, you know, create sounds that allow you to go beyond and to do something more contemporary and maybe more encourage you to exploring new territories. Uh, someone wants to know how, how, how long does it take to model a synthesizer like a Sam or a Dave Smith? Well, to be honest, it's really variable. Uh, there are since we are typically not able to model at all, like because there are some stuff that we cannot do, that we don't have the competencies, or that are just so hard to do right now in terms of research uh, and GSP that we cannot do. There are some synthesizers where we know the drill and we know how to do, and it's much easier. But like, I can't really give you a number because each time we model something, there is a new challenge every time, you know, except if maybe we would model two very similar things. but. You know, new filter design, new challenge. New small feature within an instrument, new challenge. And there are some scenes I would love to do, to be honest, but that we can't. And there are some stuff that we can do fairly easily. And easily means still a lot of work, like several months, like almost a year of a whole team of engineers and everything that revolves around the engineers, like QA, product management, sound design. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And that's it, basically. I think I replied to uh, all the questions. So uh, once again, I was really happy to be with you. Uh, 
now it's almost Christmas, end of the year. So I think I will be happy to leave uh, on Friday in vacation, visit my family, and I hope you will all do the same. Once again, I hope that you will try the new instruments in the V collection. Uh, there are the demos that are available. I hope that you get you know, a good impression when trying them because we are really putting our love and effort in making these instruments. And myself, I'm really proud of what we've been doing. And uh, I hope that you will, you know, just continue exploring, making music. And this is the reason we, we work like this, you know. We make instruments that help you create, you know, uh, art and culture and that can enhance your creativity. And, you know, hearing the music and sometimes our presets in music is just the reason for us to be. And uh, please continue to make music, continue to explore. And I hope uh, we'll uh, see each other next year for another live stream or in a trade show or something. So take care, everyone. Best wishes for the next year. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.